I have this transmission to clean up. It broke during a race from a, from a Miata. Anyways, I'm taking off the end cap and putting on an engine stand mount that I have. I have the engine stand mounted to this table here, and that's going to allow me to hold it while I take the rest of it apart. I have a pan under there to catch any oil, and I have to drive out a lot of drift pins for the shift mechanism, and then start undoing bolts that hold the, the case together. Once the case is all apart, I can start getting the, the gear assembly out. This poor Mazda Miata transmission. If you look inside the case here, you can see chunks of teeth, nice chunks of teeth in that intermediate case piece. And then here on the gear set, all of these teeth are gone. And there's some chunks taken out of this one here that it drives. Have you ever wondered how a Mazda Miata transmission works? The gear shift lever connects to this little cup here. When you move the shift lever, this little prong here can move in and out and left and right. This goes in these slots here. This is three separate slots. And these are for your shift forks, these three rods. So depending on which gear set you select, like this middle one is gonna be your third and fourth gear set. This one here on the, the bottom is fifth and reverse. And this one on the top is first and second. If you were going to select first gear, it would pull this shaft rearward, which would slide this fork so that it interlocks with the, the gear here. When the engine spins and the clutch is engaged, the input shaft here is spinning, always spinning when the engine's running. And this gear, the damaged gear, drives this gear at the bottom which is called the cross shaft. So this cross shaft is always spinning when the engine's running and the clutch is out because this is spinning. The cross shaft is driving all of these gear sets. These gear sets are on bearings and can freewheel. They all turn together and they freewheel on the main shaft. For the gear ratios, the cross shaft's smallest gear Driving the biggest gear on the output is first gear. That's where it has the most gear ratio, the most gear ratio leverage. And then on the same selector as first gear, second gear. So this is your second gear set. Third gear is the next one here. This is your third and fourth gear selector. Your fourth gear is a one-to-one -one drive, and it just connects the input shaft here right to the output shaft. And then on the back, fifth gear is the biggest um, gear on the cross shaft driving the smallest gear on the output shaft and then reverse is the straight cut gears which actually they don't touch there there's a third intermediate gear which goes between them to reverse direction of the output shaft when you go to shift gears in the transmission the the shift fork here slides in the groove of this shift selector and so when you move the lever, it's going to move this ring forward or back over the center gear. The center gear has splines in it and is splined so it's locked onto the output shaft. The synchro ring, this brass ring, has a taper on the inside and it mates with this taper on the outside of the gear. If you just press it lightly, you can spin it, but if you give it a little bit of pressure and push harder, it locks into place, it locks on that taper, and it's really hard to spin. And then again, with gentle pressure, it spins nicely. The actual gear is a, has a smooth bore and runs on a needle bearing um, on the shaft so that it can freewheel on the shaft. The gear selector ring, as it slides over the inner cog, there's actually three little keys. These little keys have a little, a little top part. And what that does is it nests into this little groove or this little recessed in, in the middle of the, the teeth on the selector ring. So it kind of um, uh, nests in place there. These keys are spring-loaded by sitting on top of 
these little ring springs inside the gear so that they put a little tension up on the selector ring to make the selector ring snap into place or stay centered if you're not sliding it forward or backwards. The back side of the synchro ring has these three little notches. These notches interlock with the, the keys, the synchro keys, so it holds it in place so that it, it doesn't freewheel, it doesn't spin. When you go to select a gear, you can see that, that synchro ring in here. So we have our gear our spinning, free spinning on the shaft. Again, when the engine is running and the, the clutch is engaged, this is always spinning. And when you put in the clutch, it disconnects the engine from the, the transmission. When this selector collar starts moving, these little teeth of the selector collar start pushing against that synchro. And when it pushes against that synchro, it stops this gear from spinning. Again, without the push, it spins. You start pushing and it locks this gear. It stops it from spinning. And it stops it so it lines up. And the teeth of the gear selector ring will mate with the synchro and go past and slide onto the teeth of the gear. So now the gear is locked onto the shaft. So when you let the clutch out, this gear spins and it spins the whole shaft and spins the drive shaft and makes the car go. And then when you go take it out of gear, this ring slides back and then now this gear can freewheel. When the synchros start to wear out, the synchros don't slow the gear that, that's freewheeling down fast enough. So when you go to shift, the the teeth, the dog teeth of the gear here, collide with these teeth on the inside of the selector ring, and you get that. And that's the grinding gear noise that you get in a transmission.